Well, uh, 64 slice CT hasn't changed very much. Uh, I think we're probably two years away from the next big change that'll be coming in CT. Uh, what's, what's 64 slice CT really is, is uh, w when CT started, it used to take one slice at a time, and it would take a few minutes actually to take one slice through the body, and that slice was a centimeter or so thick. Um, now what we can do is take 64 slices in one rotation of, of the gantry, and that can be done in somewhere around three-tenths of a second, and those slices are six-tenths of a millimeter thick, and 64 of those are done in one rotation. That means it still takes several rotations to go through the heart, so we take a few segments and then we put them together uh, with, with uh, three-dimensional reconstruction. Uh, the next uh, advance will likely uh, allow us to take a picture of the entire heart in one rotation of the gantry, and that should be coming in a few years, so that'll be uh, pretty exciting. When we look in the chest, we really look for everything, and, and uh, one of the things that does happen very often is someone comes in with chest pain. Chest pain, it can be anything in the chest that causes chest pain. So we do look at things like the aorta, where we can look for a problem with the aorta, like a dissection that may be causing acute chest pain. But we can also look at the coronary arteries, one of the more common causes for acute chest pain. Uh, but we, and we can also look at the lungs and the uh, arteries in the lungs, because sometimes uh, chest pain and shortness of breath can be caused by something called uh, a pulmonary embolism. Uh, you may have heard of that. Uh, some people get it after long, long flights. Uh, some people get it chronically. That's when a blood clot from your legs can come up and get stuck in an artery in your lungs. So, in other words, when we do a CT of the chest, we're really looking for quite a few different uh, things. Let's take a look first at aneurysm. And uh, we'll show you some examples. This is... Uh, uh, gentleman who came in for screening and uh, didn't know he had a problem at all and uh, turned out he has an aneurysm. You can see that we can see it quite precisely, make very good measurements. In this case, it was uh, 5.4 uh, centimeters, which is a, a fairly large aneurysm, certainly something that is dangerous and is in need of repair. This is just a, a three-dimensional review, uh, um, reconstruction, where you can see the aneurysm. And this is uh, one of those candy cane kind of views. That now, one thing about evaluating the aorta is the aorta isn't a fixed size. And people talk about an aorta being four centimeters or four and a half or 3.5, but it actually changes uh, during different parts uh, of the heart cycle. And, and we've looked at enough now where we evaluate the aorta in systole when the heart's pumping blood out, and in diastole when the heart's relaxing, that we, we kind of know on average that for people under 45 years old, uh, the aorta is going to change by something like uh, three, maybe four millimeters in size between the time the heart's squeezing or systole and the time the heart's relaxing. And if you just get a plain CT, it's not going to give you a good measurement of the size of the aorta. Uh, because a plain CT, the, the aorta is going to be moving all around. If you get a CT that's cardiac gated, where we put electrode leads on your chest and we, and we actually time the image to the beating of the heart, we can measure the aorta in both the time the heart's relaxed and the time the heart's contracted. 